by two download options. One is torrent, recommended, the other is direct download. You can choose and download from the country that suits you. I will download from worldwide. We select and download the latest version from the page that opens. After the ISO has downloaded, we can now move on to the installation phase. If you are experiencing a black screen error in VirtualBox or VMware, all you have to do is enter the settings of your virtual machine, go to the display section and activate 3D graphics, and your problem will be solved. And as we saw, Arch Linux worked without any problems. If you get such an error while installing your Arch Linux, all you have to do is update the keyring as I will show you now. I show it in the video and your problem will be solved with this. Now we can proceed with the installation. We type Arch install and start the installation script. In the first option, we choose which language the installation script will be in. We use the escape key to go back. In the second option, we choose which mirror we will download from. That is, which server in which country. We choose the country closest to you. We can use tab to select. You can use slash for searching. Here, he chooses which mirror will give the best result for us and decides this with the download speed. After selecting, we try back. In the third section, we can now move on to disk partitioning. There will be two options for partitioning. One is we will partition manually in the second option. In the first option, it automatically makes the most suitable one. We select our disk with tab and press enter. Here we choose which file system to format my disk with, since BTRFS is the most ideal for snapshot. I choose it and press enter to continue. We select use compression and press enter and see how it partitions the disk. We go down and press back enter. In the fourth option, I encrypt our disk. If you are installing on a notebook, encrypting the disk is very important. Make sure to encrypt your disk so that your data is not stolen, even if your notebook is stolen. Now we select our bootloader. This is the first loading screen that appears when we turn on our computer. If you are using dual boot, we select the operating system from the screen. Grub is selected by default, and this is the best. In the next selection, it asks whether to have swap or not. If your RAM is full, Swap allocates space from the disk and uses it as RAM. Here we enter host name. This will be the name of our computer. Now we are writing the root password here. You can write whatever you want, but be careful. If your root password is easy, your entire system can be lost. Those who can log into the root account can do almost everything on your system. The password is not visible while typing, but it is written. Here we are opening a new user account for ourselves. The same thing I said for root applies here too. Here it asks us if our user account should have root permissions. If you say yes, your account can do everything that root can do. We click confirm and exit and return to the installation screen. In the profile section, we choose whether our system should be a server, desktop, or minimal. If it is minimal, it will only be command line. If you choose desktop, you can choose the desktop environment you want. Each one is different from itself. Stay tuned, a video will come with it. The second option is to choose which graphics driver you will use. My suggestion is that if you are using NVIDIA, the closed source NVIDIA drivers are used. Since I am in a virtual machine, I will choose the virtual machine drivers. We go down and press back enter. We choose which audio drivers to use. My suggestion is Pipewire. We choose which kernel we will use from the Linux section. It would be more appropriate to choose Linux Zen. Don't mind me. Additional package section. You can write the necessary programs. I will write Firefox for testing. In the network configuration section, we choose which network manager we will use. If you have chosen a KDE or Genome desktop environment, you should use Network Manager. In most cases, you need to use Network Manager. We select the time zone in the time zone option. 
you can search and find your own country with slash. You can also choose the optional repository part, but I will choose it. And we select Install, then press Enter and start the installation. And the installation is started. I will speed it up and cut it here. We will continue when it is finished. After the installation is completed, we say yes and type exit and then reboot now to restart our system. And the opening screen, that is, the grub screen, appears. We select Arch Linux and continue and our system opens. And the login screen appears. Since I am in a virtual machine, I select X11 from above. You don't need to select it. We type our password and press enter. Our system is opening. And that's it. Our system is opened. And as we see Firefox is installed, the installation is completed successfully. Thank you for watching. I will continue to make videos about Linux tips. And you can watch the videos I put here where I teach you Linux. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the video.